Hey guys, it's me again, Barry with Barry's A-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair. And uh, if you're a subscriber to my channel, you've probably noticed that I haven't put out a video uh, in a couple of weeks. And uh, that's a trend that's probably going to continue for at least a while um, with more than 600 uh, demonstration videos of my work on YouTube, uh, my business has increased quite a bit, and so time constraints have become more and more of a factor. And so, um, one thing I'll mention is that when I uh, these videos were not originally intended to be promotional and uploaded to YouTube, they were basically a measure to protect myself against customers who hook up their units incorrectly and blow things out then they send their unit back and angrily thinking that it's a warranty issue that I did something wrong so um, uh, every single job that I finish I make a video for the customer so that if there's any problem upon installation uh, it's it, it's it's already proven that the unit itself was fine when I left the shop uh, and then so uh, tying into all that uh, talking about the time constraints, um, as these units continue to age, um, I'm having to do more and more inventions uh, to replace parts that are no longer available. And generally, it's the it's the stuff that made these units special and fancy back then is what makes them harder to repair nowadays. Because these little special fancy features, um, the parts for those features were only in production for a short time, uh, and there's there's I mean, after 40 years, there's zero aftermarket support for these specialized parts. So uh, now we can go on to this unit here that I'm demonstrating uh, uh, as a further explanation of that. Uh, the the Ford Mark III AMA track units have uh, an eject function. Uh, you, normally, you push very lightly on this end knob here and it, and it pops out the tape or it also automatically pops out the tape when you turn the car off or turn the radio off and that way the tape's not held in there jammed up against the cap stand and putting a dent in the pressure roller you know from that uh, well um, okay as, as I mentioned I am uh, sort of becoming a king of eight track inventions to, to keep these units on the road uh, so this unit has the that eject feature had that eject feature the eject solenoid is burned out that's becoming more and more of a failure trend and so those solenoids are not available um, I'm not able to find anything small enough to fit that has enough pull to uh, you know to to engage the uh, the tape eject so what I've done is I've this is another invention only available at Barry's a track, a track repair because I'm the one who came up with it um, uh, since the tone control on a conversion job since the tone control can be used as both a fader and a balance control uh, I went ahead and just removed the original balance control and I have a lever a mechanical eject lever in place of that and it looks almost similar um, it just looks like the balance controls all the way to the left but it looks like it's still there uh, now for an extra 50 bucks I can make a piece uh, that makes it appear that the balance control is in the center if if aesthetics is a real big concern uh, that would be like an extra fifty dollars because I gotta buy a big old sheet of aluminum uh, and, and cut it it's gonna take a lot of time and, and some expense so I have to charge fifty bucks uh, to make that fix to do this simple fix there's no extra charge and so most customers would probably opt to do this so uh, with that being stated uh, this unit is from Guy in Aurora, Nebraska, and it's out of a 69 Ford T-Bird. Uh, this customer has requested the modern FM conversion with the Bluetooth and USB features. Uh, and, of course, the A-Track, you know, is repaired as well with a new motor and a new preamp that I build by hand. Uh, which sounds much brighter than the original preamp. Brings out the treble that's lost over the years with these, uh, with these tapes. So let's go ahead and turn this unit on. And I have to keep the songs very short to avoid copyright nailings and stuff like that. So I've got all the presets set to FM stations in my area. And we'll just run through them real quick. So let's turn it on. Okay, just run through the presets real quick. Okay, that one didn't quite take. Let's reset that one. There we go. I yearn for Okay, we're gonna we're gonna switch it over to AM, and on this unit we do it by turning it off and then right back on within about half a second. So off on. Now we're on AM, and we get one strong station in my area right around here, so let's make sure we can tune that in. Okay, there's a weak station. There's another kind of weak station. And 
too. There we, we go. We care about the poor. Look, okay, so there's our strong AM station. We care about the poor. So we'll keep that. The stuff is disgusting. We'll keep it on talk radio for right now because i got to leave it on here for a little bit. We're going right, to demonstrate the virtual uh, the virtual the balance of fader functions. See, of, it's all in the tone of, control. To activate the virtual left-right fader, we turn our tone control twice to the right. So let's try that. But sadly, we have. So you have so many... Fader adjust. Okay, fader adjust. So now we're going to... I'm going to start adjusting it. We're going to bring our output level meters so we can see the results of our adjustments. All the way rear. All the way front. All the way rear. All the way Not front. The okay, I'm going to set the speakers. Says, the Stop adjusting it and. Fader set. Fader is set. Fader's okay, now let's try the balance control. Same procedure except we uh, activate by turning our tone control twice to the totally left. Unnecessary. Balance adjust. Okay, People so now the same class, control is adjusting our left right balance. Uh, way left, all the way right. Left. Tap in that vein. Okay, Tap I'm going to stop adjusting it. Now they've got their well balance set. Balance is set. Okay, now let's make sure the Bluetooth goes hand. into a pairing mode. This Do that by turning our volume control twice to the right. We don't need these meters anymore. But if the Biden okay, here we go. Can get more metal class. Bluetooth ready to pair. Okay, Bluetooth pair. ready to pair. So the unit is now trying to pair want. with a portable audio because device, and I don't go to all that, that time on the class. video. If it goes into pairing mode, we know it's working. While we're waiting, so uh, in 90 seconds, the lady will come back saying, pairing not completed since it won't successfully pair. While we're waiting for that, let's test the USB function. We got our little USB dongle sticking out. Just going to plug my radio commercial in real quick. Make sure it plays. Spending, spending Here we go. Money. This is why economic... Back. There's a radio. The okay, let's go back to FM. Oh, got to keep the songs really short. Alrighty, uh, yeah, this song I could play in its entirety because I wrote it and I own the copyright. So uh, that's uh, no issue there. So let's go ahead and pop an A track in here and hear how I can make your A track sound. Got some Neil Sedaka. Okay, now, uh, my eject lever, when you push the tape in, this eject lever will pop out about a quarter inch. And when you're finished listening to the tape, just press on that and it'll pop the tape back out. So here we go. Okay, switch tracks a bunch of times. Just a quick speaker check, make sure we got all four speakers. Okay, we're at the end of the song here. so. It's either going to switch tracks or start the next song on that track. I'm not sure which it's going to be. Alright, let's push away, check. Let's you pull the tape out and the radio comes back. Okay, last thing you check is a dial light, which you probably can't see, but I can. You can just barely see that green, that dial glowing green as I press the button, although I, I think you probably can't see it, but I can. So, uh, everything's in proper working order. She's ready to go back to the customer, and I'm ready to get on to the next job. Uh, this will probably be my last video today because I am trying to save, uh, I am trying to save time. Um, I, I enjoy uploading uploading the videos to YouTube, but uh, first I have to convert them from DVD to a, an uploadable format, and then I have to upload them to YouTube, and then I have to grab that URL and put it on my website. Uh, that takes about an extra hour per per job, and with the with the way my business is growing right now, I, I simply cannot afford to spend that extra time at the expense of my top quality workmanship. Uh, the workmanship always, always, always comes first. Uh, because one thing you don't want to do is have to pull out your unit again. One thing I don't want to ever have to do is work on it for free under warranty. So everything is all about the top quality workmanship. 
Uh, that's why my turn times tend to be pretty long. That's why uh, I will not allow status inquiries. Hey, how's my unit coming? Well, you know, it's still 20 units away from the bench, sir. You need to check the job status page. So uh, that being stated, thank you guys for your business. Thank you guys for watching and listening. I, I will be back on YouTube probably uh, after another after I do the videos and maybe five or six more jobs and, and, and the workload is somewhat lightened, then I'll probably have time to start uploading to YouTube again. Uh, but, for, but for right now, we're only giving these videos to the customer as a proof of performance and proper operation. So thanks so much for watching listening, guys. Thank you again, Guy, for your business. Clear from Aurora, Nebraska, and we'll see you next time.